today and my research which I did uh, is to give you the what is the fintech perspective to the European Union. Uh, so first uh, when Kumar and I discussed about the topic uh, we decided that the good uh, topic would be to give the like the, the, to the title of the topic is to give the perspective of the, of the European Union regarding fintech and um, I was reading about uh, uh, the regulatives and initiatives which the European Union is uh, proposing and um, I'm doing myself a number of evaluations of these projects in the area of fintech but then I realized it would be also good today to uh, make an evaluation and to see what actually European Union have accomplished uh, in terms of project that they are funding and also um, to give an outside check and to see how the scientific research in the area of, uh, is, is evolving and how it is related to the European Union perspective. So we are going to have a three perspective uh, picture to the fintech in uh, Europe in terms of European regulations and initiatives, then uh, the funding of the European Union projects, and finally, uh, how this is all uh, reflected into the overall research in fintech uh, I did some text mining on the research uh, in uh, fintech that is uh, indexed in Scopus and we'll go to that later. So these are the three research questions and the first one is uh, what are commission actions regarding fintech at the EU and national levels. So let's see first uh, how EU defines fintech. So uh, it is related to the impact of new technologies to financial services. However, uh, how they understand it is that they focus to products, processes, and business models. Uh, so this uh, uh, overall perspective is related to, to usage, to, to actually to the financial services, but also you will see later that most of the research in, in terms of project is focused on new technologies and also to the security. Uh, so the European Union understands, which I think, I think very important that the pace of innovation into this area is exponential. And of course that there is a variety of new tools uh, that we heard today which are uh, driving the new services uh, into information technology. So what, what has basically happened is, as I understand it, is that uh, information technology gave us a new tool to understand the world and to operate with it. And in the, in the past, when you think about the past of the huge human race, when the human race invented, I don't know, the steel or the fire or whatever else, uh, so the new applications of this uh, came up. And the same thing is uh, going on with the uh, information technology, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and other, other things, and they are moving into different areas of the human life. Uh, and FinTech is uh, changing because of this new technology, and it is good that the European Union is recognizing this initiative. Uh, so most of the uh, initiatives of the European Union are related to artificial intelligence, social networks, and machine learning, uh, which are seen as the new drivers of the new business models. It is seen that it gives both uh, benefits to the companies and to uh, uh, consumers, since it increases efficiency, but also in the same time increases the benefits for the, for the persons. For example, you have online banking, uh, online payments, uh, banks uh, today are, some of the banks are going today to be completely uh, online, peer-to-peer -peer lending, personal investments, uh, advice and services. So these are just some of them. You heard uh, some of those uh, from the, uh, plan, uh, from the uh, uh, plenary discussion previously about how to support SMEs uh, to, to give a better uh, insight into the uh, lending and to credit uh, scoring of the companies. So FinTech is a rapidly growing sector and a com uh, commission uh, launch action plan to FinTech. It has a three directions. So one of them is to enable innovative business models, the other one to uptake a new technology, and to increase cybersecurity. And here are the action plan. So these initiatives uh, are uh, mainly oriented to enhance supervisory convergence and to in enable uh, innovative fintech solutions. And this action plan is uh, uh, related into also three areas, groundbreaking innovation, increased safety, and more opportunities also for the fintech companies, uh, which benefits consumers, investors, banks, and new market players. 
The most important steps which uh, European Union proposed are the following. So EU FinTech Laboratory uh, was established, which is operating, they had actually uh, two or three meetings until now. Uh, then Commission uh, forced, uh, uh, established a blockchain observational forum, which is also initiative. What is important here it is uh, into these labs and forums, European Union initiative is uh, organizing uh, professors, researchers, uh, but also uh, SMEs and startups uh, who are working into this area uh, to come up with the proposals on how to increase the efficiency, but also on how to increase uh, the regulations uh, into this area. Uh, what else uh, is here important is the cybersecurity and the best practices on regulatory sandboxes. Actually, there are 19 initiatives into FinTech Action Plan. Uh, you can read it, of course, online, but these are the most important ones. When, you, when we go to the overview of all of this, so again, we see that uh, the goal is to create a more competitive uh, and innovative market. You, you see, what is the point? You will see later that the China and US are the leading, actually, countries in a fintech. Uh, since European Union is uh, the conglomeration of the countries, and it consists of the small countries, each of those countries would not be successful in any initiative. But uh, when the European Union is such a long, such a large conglomerate of these countries, if there are some initiatives which are uh, making together, uh, in that way, European Union can become an important player in any area, and one of them is, of course, FinTech. Uh, so there, you can see here on the right, support uptake of new technologies. Uh, for example, clarify rules, rules to facilitate use of cloud services, EU initiative to promote uh, blockchain, uh, EU FinTech Lab, which I mentioned to you, then stronger cyber resilience, which is related to facilitate information sharing on cyber threats, uh, high supervisory convergence and enforcement of IT uh, risk management and increased EU coordination in cyber threat uh, testing. It is also important that European countries collaborate into this area together so that they exchange the data on cyber threats. For example, uh, just a few days it was a threat uh, uh, for the Croatia, uh, so some cyber attacks, and uh, this data was shared with all of the European countries very uh, quickly. And the most important one, to my opinion, is encourage innovative business models, uh, which is related also to regulatory sandboxes, supervisors, aligned standards, new EU rules to enable crowdfunding, and uh, easy and more uniform licensing rules for new fintech initiatives. So when we check at this, we see that basically there are three directions, which I mentioned previously, new technologies, new business models, and stronger cyber resilience. Uh, these are the current steps, which I mentioned here, uh, the EU FinTech Lab, which I mentioned, uh, FinTech Action Plan, also public consultation on FinTech, call of applications in that area, and number of EU project uh, initiatives. So the question is, when we see here what is the thinking, let's say, of the European Union in this direction, is to see how this is transferred into EU-funded projects. So methodology for this is something which may be useful also for some of you in your research or thinking about the application of the projects. Is, uh, it is always good to see what other people have done into this area. So uh, I searched the CORDIS database. Uh, down is, uh, on, on the bottom is uh, the link. And I searched just with the FinTech keyword. And 20 I projects, uh, 28 projects were uh, selected. And among of them, 25 were closely related to FinTech. Other just mentioned FinTech as uh, the side uh, aspects of uh, some, something else. Uh, what I put here is if you're familiar with the Horizon uh, funding and other fundings of the European Union, uh, it is always interesting to see what specific type of uh, project funding have been funded, actually, the, the fintech programs. And uh, I don't know if you, if you are aware of this, but there is maybe about 200 of Horizon programs, which are very well funded. And it's sometimes a challenge to decide and pick the right one. So uh, this is a useful information for those of you who would like to contact uh, the fintech projects maybe for this uh, research group and for the researchers here would be interesting to, to check uh, those contexts and also to see where the funding opportunities lay down. 
So the first fintech project was funded by the FP5 program. It was in 2003, very, very early, since uh, the later uh, publication was in 2005. You will see later. Then FT Open, Horizon, uh, Excellent Science, only one. But most of them was uh, uh, in social science, societal uh, challenges, which is very interesting. However, they were related to security, you will see later, and uh, new technologies uh, development. Uh, also, ensure privacy and freedom. It was the three projects. So you can see from those broad areas that were financed that the perspective of the citizens and also the perspectives of the industry or business were taken into account uh, of the funding. So what I look here, what I did here is that I uh, put here examples of the pro all those projects and uh, uh, put here which area broadly it covers. So uh, the first one was fintech technologies uh, for software and system in the financial services. It was funded actually in 2002. And you will see later that the first one uh, publication that used the keyword fintech in Scopus was in 2005. So uh, European Union was, was way ahead uh, uh, of the research. And it is also interesting to see which countries were the coordinators. And here it was Greece. And this one was for encouraging innovative business models. Uh, later, and then it was the gap. FP7 did not have any, uh, any fintech project. It lasted for uh, sev seven years, FP7 and FP6. And the horizon had a boom in fintech funding. So uh, the Fed Open, you see that uh, stronger cyber resilience, it was funded in Switzerland, a climate exposure tool for financial risk analysis, and the word climate means, it refers to the ecosystem actually of the, of the investment, means to business climate. And the second one was, was interact in the centralized transactional and ledger arch architecture for mutual credit. It's, it's actually about the blockchain, but the word was not used here. So you can see here also how the uh, terminology was changing. And it was used to support uptake of new technologies, and the first one was the, about the cyber uh, security. Uh, then fostering innovation networks in digital era. It was uh, in order to uh, encourage innovative business models. Netherlands was the leader. And later I will show you which of the European countries are flagships in fintech, and you will see how actually this is strongly related. Uh, then it was uh, open innovation train, uh, research, translation, and applied knowledge exchange and practice through university industry cooperation, which encourage also innovative business models. It was funded by Spain. Uh, later, Italy and Poland. Uh, it was a financial supervision and technology compliance training program. Although it seems at the first sight it is related to, to regulations and security, it was actually uh, uh, fostering innovative business models and uh, disrupting the economy, fintech, blockchain, uh, projects was also developed, uh, and you will see that there are many blockchain projects funded. Uh, then, uh, Bank Socializer, banking platform based on social media interactive services, uh, which also encourage innovative business model, and iMovo, international production of a disruptive digital vouchering technology, which was used for, uh, in support to uptake of new technologies. Uh, in industrial leadership, uh, it was two projects. Uh, both of them were for the uptake of new technologies. Uh, the second one was uh, for the big data utilization in fintech. And the first one was uh, uh, also for the regulations, but also, but mainly for the uh, life cycle process and asset management industry. So here, uh, the utilization again of the fintech and blockchain in these uh, industries were, uh, was in, uh, investigated. Uh, enhancing the innovation capacity of SMEs. So that type, although, although the, 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 type, the program was enhancing the innovation capacity of SMEs, since I finished the Faculty of Economics and Business and I'm an economist, I would presume that they were going into the enhancing of business models, but actually they were fostering the new technology. And it was mostly, again, uh, focused to blockchain. Actually, the, all three of them were focused on blockchain. What we have here, uh, social technology, social cha challenges. Uh, they were related to the artificial intelligence. So this project uh, had a focus to the artificial intelligence risks, but also to the usage of artificial intelligence as a new business model. 
blue code, the smartphone payment scheme for Europe, uh, was also aimed to develop. And uh, what I know from the analysis of other uh, projects in uh, e-health, for example, that these projects usually result in some kind of regulations, which are later used in uh, uh, European Union overall. And these projects were funded in Austria and Spain. So the coordinators was from Austria and Spain, and you will see later uh, how this reflects into uh, uh, countries which are leading the fintech. Uh, API enabled invoice protection in Europe. So uh, some of the researchers uh, at the plenary talk uh, spoke about the APIC. And the last one was about the democratized uh, financial services, which is also related to the blockchain. And then we have uh, stronger cyber resilience, uh, frictionless two-factor authentic authentication software for secure transactions. So you see how the projects are evolving. They started from the new opportunities for the companies, then they moved to blockchain and to artificial intelligence, but now there is a need to, to give more regulations into this area, for example, in, into this specific uh, uh, implication. Then the next generation banking tools for the blockchain economy. Uh, privacy financing cri cryptography distributed ledgers, again blockchain, but with the issues of privacy. And we have, I think this is the last one, ensure privacy and freedom. It was also related to stronger cyber resilience. It was related to the GDPR, uh, cyber security optimization for in finance, and uh, the last one, it was again blockchain and financial security. I'm sorry, I, I just could not remember all of them. But as, as we can see, uh, as a sum up, uh, most of them are related to blockchain. Some of them are related to artificial intelligence. And there is a pretty good number related to regulations and cyber threat uh, prevention. So when we look at these programs uh, and we analyze them, we can see that uh, most of the projects, as I mentioned here, were in the leadership uh, in enabling and industrial technologies. It was seven of them. And they were focused to uptake of new technologies and business model. However, four of them were more oriented to technology, and three of them were oriented to business models. And when we see here, we can see that most of the projects were related to the new technology, 13 of them. Six of them were related to the uh, new business models, and the six of them related to stronger cyber resilience. So I'm not going to go back to the overall uh, European Union uh, framework for the fintech, but you can see here that those actions of the European Union were actually not, let's say, uh, not evenly distributed, but the more effort was uh, focused to the development of new technologies, while the development of new business models was not so much uh, given the funding. How this is reflected in the research of FinTech uh, and how EU initiatives, EU initiatives are related to it. Uh, I wanted to see, well, what I presented you here are the projects of the European Union. I presented to you the initiative of the FinTech, but uh, what I did, uh, uh, actually a few days ago, is I wanted to check how this all transfers to the research. So I just go to Scopus and then uh, put the keyword fintech and precisely 500 of the papers uh, came up. This was the number actually a few days ago. And on this I did the keyword extraction and topic mining. So here there are some interesting results which you will see how again they are translated to the fintech distribution in the world. First, we have bibliometric analysis. And you see that the first FinTech paper was actually published in 2014. And uh, now the number of papers is exponentially increasing. Uh, in 2018, it was about uh, 200. And in 2019, it is half of this. So probably it will come up to the same number or, or even higher. Uh, when you see most of the publications which uh, publish the FinTech, so these are Economist, United Kingdom, Electro Electro Electronic, uh, sorry, Electronic Commerce Research and Applications, Advances Intelligence System and Computing, and ACM International Conference, and Lecture Notes in Computer Science. So these are the, um, let's say, publications which published the largest number of FinTech. But when we go to the authors, 
So there are some of the names of the authors which published most of the papers. But this is more uh, interesting to see from which universities do they come from. So we see that the leading is Songsil University, then University of Zurich is following, University of Sydney, which we mentioned just a few minutes ago, uh, Australia again, Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, National Chengchi University, uh, Bina, New Central University, Left Coast, and Chinese University of Hong Kong. So you can see that these universities are the leading universities in the fintech research. And regarding the countries, most of the papers were from the United States, then the China is following, South Korea, United Kingdom, which is no longer a European country, so I cannot brag with it, as it is European Union, okay? Then G Germany, Australia, Taiwan, Italy, which is not a coincidence that we are here in Milan, Singapore, and Hong Kong. And I put here the map of the most innovative countries in the world, not just in fintech, uh, based on the Bloomberg, uh, Bloomberg research, and you can see that um, US, Finland, Germany, Japan, South Korea are leading. So these are the darkest color, indicates the most of the innovation. Then they are followed by China, Canada, uh, Russia, some of the European countries, Australia, and so on and so on. So you can see that there is actually a strong correlation between the overall innovation in a country and the number of papers published in FinTech from that particular country. So this is a good indicator of uh, how overall innovative actions are related to universities uh, in, in both directions. Uh, most of the documents were published in the area of computer science, and I think it is also important that they are published in business management, economics, and social science. So there's a huge number of research into how fintech translates into economics, how it translates into business, how to increase the competitiveness of the fintech and banks, and to merge them together and to make them more competitive. And there are other areas like engineering, material science, mathematics, decision science, and so on. But actually, economics, business, social sciences are dominating the fintech research. Because it is not just enough to have a good and efficient technology, it is more important to use it in a more efficient manner in, so that it increases the competitiveness of a company and a country. Uh, funding of this research. For some of the papers, it was stated the funding. And you can see that the Korea and China are the biggest funder of the fintech research, followed by the European Union. And you will see later how, again, it is translated to the fintech initiatives at the country level. Uh, so these are the citations. You can see how the citations of the paper is also increasing. And since uh, I suppose there is a number of people here from the research area, I put the 10 most cited papers here. Uh, well, of course, as you can expect, most of them are re review papers, which are always very useful. Uh, but you can see that some of them are in China. For example, the last one is Nurturing a FinTech Ecosystem, a case study on China. Uh, survey on fintech, uh, banking business models, uh, why do business go uh, uh, crypto, and again, analyzing China fintech industry from a perspective of actor network theory. So uh, here, we, we could say here that they are in the, in the most cited papers, they are basically those who are reviewing the fintech and researching China. So these are the most cited papers that have the most impact into the fintech research area overall. I did some text mining. Uh, even when we think about, some people think about the text mining, that this is a qualitative analysis. This is actually not. This is actually a numeric analysis, which counts the number of words, which counts the number of phrases. But uh, you can get some insight about what is going on in some area in a quite quick manner. And there is a number of literature review that is using text mining today. So the methodology is, just the brief uh, uh, reminder that the text mining is the process of exploring and analyzing uh, large amounts of unstructured text. Into this example, I analyzed the abstracts of the paper, added by software, in order to in identify concepts, patterns, topic, and keywords. So the first step was the word and phrases extraction. 
So where is the concern was the question. And the second step was the topic extraction using cluster analysis. Uh, it doesn't say here, but I use Provalis word stat for this analysis. So these are the words that were extracted. The most often word is, of course, fintech and financial, technology, services, digital, innovation, and so on and so on. But it is more interesting to see what are the phrases. So the blockchain technology, here I adjust uh, fintech, uh, I remove the fintech and financial services and that type of general expressions. Uh, and here you have blockchain technology, big data, startups, machine learning, mobile payment, business models, financial services, uh, markets, crisis, retail banking, artificial intelligence, and case study. So you can see here, again, how it is related to the overall uh, fintech area. And there is some connection here with the European Union initiatives, since if you can uh, remind yourself that most of the uh, European Union projects were funded into the area of blockchain and artificial intelligence. But what issues are in focus? When you go to the topic extraction, the things uh, gets a little bit different. So here I did a cluster analysis of, the fra of those phrases. And you can see here that there are, uh, it was about 10 clusters. Before that, I removed the phrases uh, which occurred rarely. Although this is also an interesting area because these phrases which occur in a smaller number of documents, they can be used as a weak signals. So the signals of those technologies which are just emerging. And it would be also interesting to make a patent analysis uh, in, the, in the area of, of the FinTech, but I did not uh, done it for the purpose of this talk. So there is a number of clusters. Each of the clusters is uh, uh, presented in a different color, but some of them can be merged together. So the first cluster is related to artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, neural network, big data, and so on and so on, real time and social media. However, when you go deeply into these papers, you can check that most of them are actually related to stronger cyber resilience. Uh, all, all of these words occur the most into them. And one of the examples is uh, uh, machine learning based fintech cyber threat attribution framework using high level indicators of compromise. Because when you think about the financial data, let me make a little uh, uh, disruption into this talk. Is when you think about the banks, the banks are the most regulated uh, subjects in our economy. And it would be maybe the bigger, for example, if you can imagine that the bank loses all of its data. In Croatia, we have uh, Intesa San Paolo is the biggest bank, actually, Italian bank. And if it loses all of its data, it would be a bigger disaster than, than most of the uh, events that, uh, that can occur. And if we allow this data just to switch to unregulated area, to fintech startups and so on and so on, and to, to let them do with the data whatever they can, and if they swallow up most of the transactions, this can create a huge uh, cyber threat uh, for a country, and also maybe for even larger part of, parts of the world. Uh, so, uh, and the banks are highly regulated, not just, well, because they, they have a, a enormous power, they need to be regulated, uh, the citizens need to be <laughs> protected from the banks, but also banks need to be protected from the other actors which, will go, which, which, which could put the bank to go to bankruptcy or which could uh, steal the data from the bank and stuff like this. So st uh, stronger cyber uh, resilience uh, is one of them. Encourage innovative business models. Uh, it was related to banking industry, financial innovation, startups, design methodology, uh, leading platforms, financial market, and so on and so on. And you can see, so this is one of the, mm, this is the link uh, graphic on, uh, the link graph of this cluster, the first cluster. And it, you have here startup, financial innovation, banking industry, and case, case study. But they are related to social media, to technology, to artificial intelligence, information technology, and also financial stability. Because financial stability is one of the uh, most uh, researched topics into these uh, areas. Uh, however, most of these papers are related to encouraging innovative business models. So we have here three clusters for the innovative business models. Then support uptake of new technology, of course, again, blockchain. 
And when we go to the blockchain, it is uh, related to smart contract, contracts, distributed ledger, financial transactions, financial technologies. So most of this research, uh, there, are, there are three clusters related to, uh, to this uh, area. And again, we have three clusters which, which are related to the uh, uh, business innovative models. Uh, we have financial crisis, retail banking, uh, consumer protection, financial stability, financial inclusion. So these, uh, although these papers tackle some security issues, but they are again looking at them from the perspective of the new business models. When we do the sum up analysis of all of this, although this is a very rough analysis, I did not go into very, very high details, we can see that most of the topics are related to innovative business models, which are followed by the research of the supporting uptake of new technologies and stronger cyber resilience. And if you go back, if you remember previously, uh, I'm not going back to that slide, you can remember that most of the European Union projects were actually going into the different direction. They were going into the new technologies, then followed by cyber threats, and then the last one were the new business models. Okay? So, conclusion. Where is the European uh, and how is it successful in terms of fintech if we go and see what is going on in the world? You remember that I mentioned China, I, remember, I, re I mentioned Korea, I mentioned uh, some of the European countries, Australia. So how this is transferred to the overall uh, world uh, analysis. There are several analyses conducted about the fintech. This one is by Thompson. And you can see that they are, uh, this is the ranking of the fintech hub in uh, cities in the world. And you can see that they were ranked by the politi political, economic, social, and technological environment. Because in order for the fintech to thrive, all of these things need to be merged together. And you can see that the uh, first city is Singapore, then the uh, Zurich, and Geneva, London, and then comes the European Union with the Amsterdam, uh, Canada, Sweden, uh, New York, San Francisco, Frankfurt, Berlin, and so on and so on. So, although here there is maybe half of the cities are maybe little, maybe 40 percent is from the Europe, but they are not on the top. And you can see here that there, these are the countries that were mentioned by the funding of the projects: Spain, Italy, Poland, Australia, Austria, Germany if you recall when I was commenting on the, on the funding of the projects. Uh, Fintech global li landscape, so this is another analysis uh, of one uh, UK consulting company. It says here, Asia and America's lead, Europe follows. If you remember the research, most of the, so the top was China, then USA, USA then South Korea, then other countries, and then it was Europe. And we can see here that uh, uh, Beijing, San Francisco, New York, London, Shanghai, Hansou, and Shenzhen were the leading capitals into this area. And then comes the other cities from the Europe, again, which are from those countries which were funded by the, uh, those projects. Uh, Poland, uh, uh, Vilnius, it was also one Estonian project, so Frankfurt, uh, Italy, Milan is here, is what we can see. Uh, the last slide regarding this is, again, China is leading, uh, so this is the uh, EA uh, analysis. China is leading India, UK, Brazil, Australia. And then we have one of the European countries, Spain, Mexico, then Germany, South Africa, USA, Hong Kong, and so on and so on. France, Netherlands, Ireland, Italy is not here on, on this picture as I see. Uh, sorry, just to go back and comment on this. So into this report, these were the strategies to achieve tra traction, business models that drive adoption. So to my opinion, technology is always available. The point is what we are going to do with it and what we are going to do with it on a country level. And country uh, support needs to be present either mm, through the direct uh, incentives from a country, and I can assure you if European Union did not already invest so much funds into these projects and into these initiatives, it would not be even here on these maps, okay? 
uh, in the uh, United States, it's, it's a different culture. It's a culture of uh, entrepreneurship and uh, lots of starts up and new, new initiatives. But in some of those countries, uh, for example, China, it is backed up by the government initiative, similar to the European Union, which is a, a mixed, uh, mixed approach uh, to maybe to China and, and US. Uh, and there are tools and technologies which, uh, which can accelerate transactions. So if we go back again to the three areas that the European Union uh, funded uh, and decided to be funded for this research. So all these topics are present in EU, EU Fin the Agenda. The research is mostly oriented, as we see from the papers, uh, to encouraging the innovative business models. And on the other hand, EU initiatives are more ori oriented towards the new technology and cyber resilience. Okay? So what we can see, there is a group of countries, USA and China, who uh, obviously invested a lot of fintech based on a governmental or a private initiative, but uh, most of this research is focused to the business models. While on the other side, Euro European Union also did uh, the funding of the projects, although it is the third one, if you remember that graph in the funding uh, initiatives, but most of the funding went to the development of the new technologies and also to the cybersecurity threats. While the business models uh, research was not uh, so much uh, funded. And probably it is related to this ranking of the countries that I mentioned uh, previously. So what we can conclude is that EU provides infrastructure uh, in terms of new technology and cybersecurity. Uh, but all the new business models are encouraged. They still pose a significant challenge both to new entrants and to established market leaders. And possible solution uh, for the European Union would be to focus more of the fintech initiatives into that area, not only to the development of technology. And this is pretty much it uh, from my side. Uh, I hope uh, that uh, this talk uh, gave you, let's say, a balanced uh, approach, uh, a balanced perspe perspective to the European Union uh, initiatives, because I did not want to say these are great initiatives, they are doing a great job, that's for sure that they are doing a great job, but let's see in what direction this is moving Europe, and uh, let's see uh, how this can be improved or maybe given uh, a new incentives uh, for the whole European Union and the fintech revolution. So thank you very much.